Praise Yahweh. Shalom, men. Uh, let's reverence Father Yahweh. Most holy and righteous Father Yahweh, this is your servant, Kohan Koilath Hawkins, coming to you in unity with your people, Father Yahweh, being in unity with your body of priests, being seasoned servants of your last days and only witness, a great pastor and overseer, the great Kohan, Yisrael Abel Hawkins, and through and by the authority of our righteous high priest, Yeshua our Messiah. Great Father, we do come before you again this day, thanking you for this wonderful opportunity to be here and to continue to train in your house and to uh, continue to uh, learn your ways, Father Yahweh, so that we can be a part of your kingdom. We pray now that you will guard us and protect us, that you will open up our, our ears to the understanding of these great teachings, Father Yahweh, and allow these things to, to strengthen our faith and to allow us to come together, Father Yahweh, to usher in your kingdom. We do love you, we do ahab you, bless you, and thank you, and pray and ask all of these things through and by the authority of our righteous high priest, Yahshua, our Messiah. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Men, please be seated. And we're going to be starting off on uh, page 93 in the first book of Israel. Um, he who rules is Yahweh, making the connection with Yahweh. Okay, making the connection with Yahweh. And I want to read this title to you again so we can keep um, this main focus in our minds here. And the title is, The Plan of Yahweh for the Bloodline of Yeshua and the Judgment of Yahweh, protected by Yahweh in the actions of Yahweh seen in the book of Yahweh. So for the past couple of weeks, we've been covering um, the main reason why Pastor said he brought these series of sermons concerning um, this case here, this trial of Eob, okay, in the book of Eob. And he said that it was, he wanted to bring these teachings so that we can get rid of the self-pride that is in us, okay, to get rid of this self-pride. And we're going to continue in that study this evening because he shows that this self-pride actually cuts us off from Father Yahweh. Okay, it cuts us off from Father Yahweh, and it, and it cuts us off from eternal life and being a part of the kingdom of Yahweh. So last week, um, one of the things that we were really emphasizing is the statement that, that was presented to Job, the, the question that was presented to Job, will you cause my judgment to cease? No, do you think that you're so righteous... Okay, do you think that you're so righteous that you would change my whole plan? It just showed that, you know, at this time, EO didn't understand the complete plan of Yahweh and didn't understand why he was suffering and going through the things that he went through. But Yahweh, in his great wisdom, you know, having established the plan from the very beginning, knew what was necessary to bring forth Yeshua. And then he allowed EO to see these things as we read um, in the book of EO. Right, so Eob gained this great wisdom from going through these various things and rejoiced in his suffering. But all of these things are written so that we won't fall into the same situations as a lot of the other men did. Okay, questioning Yahweh, wondering, you know, Yahweh, what are you doing? Right, we, should, we shouldn't only just believe in Yahweh. Okay, we shouldn't just only believe in Yahweh, but completely trust in Yahweh. Okay, because just believing in Yahweh you know, isn't enough because people, like, like the scripture says, uh, the demons believe and they tremble, right? So it's not just enough to believe, right? We have to actually put our trust in Yahweh, you know, and like the Kahan was saying yesterday, you know, uh, he was talking about the, the carnal mind, you know, the self-preservation, all these other things. It's like we have to put our trust in Yahweh just like Abraham put his trust in Yahweh. Remember what Abraham was asked to do? Right. Offer up Isaac. Right. You know, offer up your son, Abraham. Now, Yahweh's plan was from the very beginning. Right. So he uh, Isaac was never meant to be the offering. But this was to, to, to either prove Abraham's faithfulness. Well, it was to prove Abraham's faithfulness. Right. And Abraham passed that test. OK. What about Isaac? You know, did he complain like, oh, dad, what are you doing? You know, did he go looking for a pay phone? Hey, 1-800. Uh, my dad's. Can you send somebody out here? Did he do that? No. OK, Abraham was faithful. He treated he not only believed in Yahweh, but he trusted Yahweh. Right. He trusted Yahweh. And we should be the same. OK, we should be exactly the same way. So all of these scriptures were, were written for our learning, for our learning. So we're going to start here on page 93, 93. And, and, and we're going to continue on getting this understanding of would you cause my judgment to cease? OK, because, again, we're not. We are important to Yahweh. We're very important to Yahweh, you know. 
very important. And he's pleased with the, the, the efforts that we're putting in to overcome. Okay, he's, he's very pleased with his house as a whole. But again, it's up to us as individuals to continue to strive to be completely obedient to these teachings so that Yahweh can use us in the various offices that he has established. All right, so we have to get this self-pride out or we will cut ourselves off. So um, let's just start in verse. Well, let me rehearse this here. Bottom of verse 51. Um, and I think I, you highlighted this last week, so we'll start off at the highlighted part. It says, if any form of this, and he was talking about the, uh, the bloodline. Okay, this was uh, when Yada, um, Yada's sons who weren't righteous, they did evil in the eyes of Yahweh, and they were in line for, for Yeshua. And so he says, if any of this sin had crept into his mind or his ancestor's mind to start slowing it down, it would have went right to Yeshua's bloodline. His brain would have been slowed down to where to where he would have accepted evil also as they, or there was that possibility that he would do so. Even with the breeding program, you see, a, you see different ones pulling off, so you know there was something wrong. One time, Yahweh even told them, get rid of your pagan wives. Get them out of here. They are putting this seed where it does not belong. At that time, Yahweh was bringing this down to Yeshua. It was less than a thousand years from the time that this was taking place until Yeshua's parents had Yeshua. This virus, when it gets into a computer, starts changing its program. Okay, so when when uh, viruses get into the computer, it changes the program. It changes how the computer operates. It slows it down. You get pop ups everywhere. Sometimes the computers even shut off. Sometimes you'll lose information. Right. Um, like you could be typing or something, and then you lose a month's worth of work, two days' worth of work, whatever it is. Viruses can just delete information. And this is what goes on in our body. So he's trying to get us to understand, you know, what our actions could lead to. If we sin, if we go out and commit, you know, um, fornication, adultery, eat unclean food, anything that violates Yahweh's law, we allow these viruses to alter us, right? They create these changes in us, and which leads to death. So says, first... It hits the brain and slows the brain down so it, so it can take over. It does that same thing to the body. The, science are, the scientists are working on this really hard, but they have never been able to get a drug into the brain to cure a disease of the brain. So what scripture are you thinking of right now? Based on that, it says they have never been able to get a drug in the brain to cure a disease of the brain. Any scripture popping into mind? Okay, curse clauses will not come. I heard you, Remia. <laughs> Your diseases are incurable. Right, and so they're throughout the scriptures, right? You know, these warnings, these, uh, I'm actually thinking about the one in Remia myself, but I heard some excellent scriptures, you know, pop up. You know, um, is Remia? what is Remia? what? Okay, it's a couple. This is the one that I found first, so I'm going to use this one. <laughs> this is Euremia 46.11. <laughs> so Euremia 46.11, it says, um, Go up into Gilead and take balm, O virgin, the daughter of Egypt. In, uh, in vain, you will use many medicines, but you will not be cured. All right, so in vain, you will use many medicines, but you will not be cured. Okay, that's a scripture. You know, so what are they doing? You know, the most lucrative businesses out there is Big Pharma, right? Making billions of dollars a year profit. All right, they could be sued for billions and not be bankrupt. <laughs> Big money, right? But Yahweh says, look, in vain, you will use many medicines and not be cured. There's no cure for this, okay? The only way that you're gonna uh, be disease free is like uh, one of the brethren just said, Okay, a curse causes will not come. Okay, stop sinning. Continuing on here, it says, they know that these parasites have been able to invade the brain. AIDS is one of them. HIV can also, excuse me, HIV can, and so can mad cow disease. They think if they can just figure out how to get those drugs through these receptors, the zonulin and the zot, 
then they will be able to send these drugs to the brain and cure this. It will not. Okay. And this is what they're saying. It will not, they said. But who said it first, though? You know, mm-hmm. Yahweh said it first. Yahweh says your. Oh, look, I just flipped right to it. Yahweh says that your diseases will not be cured. So I'm going to read the one in Jeremiah 30 now. Jeremiah 30, verse 12. For this is what Yahweh says. Your, in, your affliction is incurable. Your wound is severe. And there is no one to plead your case that you might be bound up or treated. You have no healing medicines. And look down to 15. It says, why do you cry about your affliction? Your disease is incurable because of the multitude of your iniquities, because your sins have increased. I have allowed these things to come upon you. Okay, so why do you cry about your afflictions? You know, people are crying about the pain that they're in. But remember what Lamentations 3, 339? 339. Someone say, yeah. All right. And he's correct. Lamentation 339. Why should any living man complain when he is being judged for his sins? Why are we complaining? You know, oh, I'm hurt. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. And then you still go getting drunk and, and doing the things that bring forth these curses. You know, the fornication, the unclean food. But you want to complain about the gout, the swelling of the joints and, you know, the different things that we suffer from. Okay, we can't complain when when we receive these curses. The only thing we can do is turn to Yahweh. Matter of fact, let me keep reading here. I'll, let me keep reading here. Because I think he actually says that in the, like the next verse. Uh, Lamentations 3 verse 40, it says, Let us rather search and try our ways and turn again to Yahweh. Let us lift our hearts along with our hands to Yahweh in heaven. Okay, so why complain? Complaining doesn't fix anything. Right. What fixes it? Okay, listening to the teacher. Right. Listening and obeying. This is what's going to solve the problems. Right. This is what's going to solve these problems. We have to turn to Yahweh. But the only way we can turn to Yahweh is by going to Yahweh's house. And this is where all of the other scriptures come in at here a little there a little. Right. Because you can't just believe in Yahweh and just do whatever you want. You know, that's not true belief anyway. Just because you know the name of Yahweh doesn't mean you believe in Yahweh. Right. You believe in Yahweh when you show up for the feast. You believe in Yahweh when you learn how to show your brothers true care and concern. Okay, you believe in Yahweh when you do all of the things that's being taught by Yahweh's house. This is how you show Yahweh that you believe him and that you trust in him. Okay, so continuing on here. It says uh, this is verse 54. This is really a dangerous thing that we are hoping to do. And this is the scientists talking, these doctors. But we will govern it with expertise And we will make sure it's something that will kill the bug, but not short of the brain. Once it gets that far, there is nothing that can be done by man. Mankind and the angels lost their ability to create and maintain flesh. Yahweh can, with this in the brain, let that person die and everything in the body die. And highlight this, men. Then he can resurrect the body without the evil that has been put there throughout his life and highlight. Okay, so it says here that then he can resurrect the body without the evil that has been put there throughout his life. So Yahweh has a way of cleansing our genes, okay, and allowing us to to truly be made like him without these curses, without the suffering. That way we can put forth, you know, more of an effort or those who have died, they can put forth more of an effort to serve Yahweh without the defilement that has been put there throughout the generations. Because remember last week we talked about the, um, the problem that we're having with the children because of the breeding, because of the genes that, that's been put in them. The, the, the desire to leave Yahweh's house has been bred into them. And this is what Yahweh is going to, one of the things Yahweh is going to fix here, you know, that desire to turn to evil. Okay, that coupled with the, um, the millennium ram when, you know, the adversary is going to be bound for the thousand years. And the house of Yahweh is going to have the authority to, to, to teach and, and make sure that there's no foolishness being promoted, right? So all of those things are, are going to help people make an educated choice. So continuing on here, it says, um, No permanent damage would have taken place, but there will have been enough damage taking place in his life that he won't want it anymore. Okay, he wouldn't want it anymore. 
Okay, so people are, are, are suffering. Okay, people are crying out for help and for relief of pain and things like that. You know, the things that people see in the world today, you know, a lot of people like break down and cry you know, because of the suffering that's going on. And a lot of these people aren't even in Yahweh's house, but you know, they just they have a compassion for life, and, they're, and it, it tears them apart. And it just reminds me of um, what the scripture says about Lot when he was in Sodom and Gomorrah. It says, you know, he was tormented in his righteous soul because of the things that he saw going around. Right? He was just tortured. He was tormented because of the acts of the people that was around him. And a lot of people in the world, they see this and they're like, you know, how can we fix this? But they don't know Yahweh. They don't know the scriptures pertaining to the plan of Yahweh. So for them, it's, it's a hopeless cause. So they don't, they don't know what to do to fix the problem. And Yahweh called us here to fix the problem, but yet pastors have to bring sermons about getting rid of self-pride because this is part of the problem. Okay, this pride is part of the problem, which he really is, he, he's going to tear into us a little bit here. Okay, so be prepared for that. Okay, he's going to tear into us a little bit. So continuing on here, it says, I doubt if the brother who died this week would ever want to go back and partake of the sin that caused this to take place in his body. That is the purpose. That is the plan. That is what Yahweh is going to stop. Eob 40 verse 8. Would you condemn me? Okay. Would you condemn me? <laughs> wow. Would you condemn me? You know, but the worldly attitude, you know, they constantly curse whom they think is the creator. You know, damn you, God, for whatever reason, right? Why'd you take my wife? You know, you kill my babies. You know, Yahweh's not up there just slaying people. You know, but they, it's so easy for them to, to curse whom they think is the creator. Okay? We can't have that attitude. We know who Yahweh is, right? We know the plan of Yahweh. You know, we can't condemn or curse Yahweh. We're supposed to rejoice in what he's doing because we know that he knows exactly what he's doing. This is part of trusting in Yahweh, even if we're suffering, even if we're suffering. Right. You think we're not going to suffer even more? You know, what do you think it's going to be like when the clouds are, you know, when the clouds block out the sun? And I'm not talking about rain clouds. OK, what are you going to do when those clouds block out the sun? OK, when food is scarce. You know, are you going to trust in Yahweh then? Remember, Pastor told us we're going to be, you know, it's going to be like to the point where all hope is lost, you know, when all, you know, when there's like no hope left, and then Yahweh's going to have to step in. You know, how many of us are going to break at that point, if any? Okay, we need to set our minds in advance not to break because we know it's going to be horrible. Okay, how horrible? I can't even imagine it. I can't imagine it. I don't know what it's going to be like. You know, I don't know how I'm going to feel in that time period. This is why we have to build our faith in Yahweh. So when it does take place, it's like, man, this is exactly what Yahweh said. This is exactly what he said. We should become strengthened by that, not quaking in our boots. Like, man, it's almost over. Praise Yahweh. But if we don't train ourselves for that right now, you know, we're going to run. Right. We're going to run. I remember when Pastor, <laughs> when he was telling us about, you know, the authorities and how they were going to come against the house. And he was like, what are you going to do if they arrest me? You know, oh, they don't they won't arrest you, Pastor. You know, he's like, some of you are going to run. Not one person ran, right? <laughs> it was a lot of people that ran. You know, a lot of people ran. And it was a lot of people that stayed. OK, it was a lot of people that stayed. Praise Yahweh. OK, but he told us these things were going to take place. OK, he told us these things were going to take place. Either we believe or we don't. Now is the time to prepare and to put our trust in him. Continuing on, it says, um, right by EO 40, verse 8, would you condemn me? The world is by these Christian, the world is by these Christian commentators. They have no idea about the plan of Yahweh to begin with. I don't think anybody on the face of the earth except Yahweh's house knows anything about the perfect plan and the breeding program or the breeding plan. I doubt if the people who, who I tried to teach, uh, teach it to at one time even remember it. They probably forgot, forgot it as fast as they forgot about me after I left there. Okay, so remember last week we talked about, you know, pastor was, was trying to give them the information, but those weren't his sheep. Okay, they did not hear the voice of the shepherd. And this is how blessed you are. You know, this is how blessed we all are. 
Because this is one of Yeshua's examples. My sheep hear my voice, right? We know who our shepherd is, right? But when we, when we have this self-pride, when we have this self-pride, when we don't listen, then we're denying him, okay? And not only are we denying him, but we're denying Yeshua. And we're also denying Yahweh. Okay, do we get that? Maybe. Okay, we get it. Okay, we read the scripture last, I think it was last week. Well, we read the scripture during this class where Yeshua said, um, he, who receives me, he, who, he who receives whom I send also receives me. And if you receive me, then you receive him who sent me. Showing that if you receive pastor, you receive Yeshua, you receive Yahweh. So if you don't receive pastor, then you don't receive Yeshua, then you don't receive Yahweh. Okay, but guess what? Who does pastor send to teach his house, to teach his family? He sends the priest, right? So it's the same thing. If you don't, if you don't receive whom he sends, then you don't receive him. You see how dangerous the self-pride is? You know, if you don't listen to the priest. Okay, you're training to be priest. Remember, that's the whole plan of the Holy Zadok priesthood, to teach others how to enter into the priesthood. Okay, you think we're trying to oppress you? We're trying to save your lives. Okay, every priest in the house of Yahweh was taught by who? Pastor, right? And by another priest who was a priest before him, right? The priests were taught by the priests. Okay, when we become priests, we help others become priests. It's what we do. It's what you're training to do. You're training to save lives. But we can't teach another message. We can't teach anything different than what's being taught at Yahweh's house or we're causing Yahweh's judgment to cease. You think you're smarter than Yahweh in his house? Is that what we think that, well, Kahan, that's not right. Well, no, this is what the law says. This is the law. This is the law. Oh, thank you, Buddha. Or whatever other God you want to proclaim, you know, whatever religion you came from. Okay? We're not smarter than Yahweh. Right? Remember what, matter of fact, it was um, Shaul said this. Let's read what Shaul said. It's in Galatians. Uh, 9, 9, 10, 9, 11. Okay, on page 9, 10. Galatians 1, verse, we'll start at verse 6. I'm astonished, okay, now look at this word, he said, I'm astonished, <laughs> I'm astonished that you have so quickly turned away from the one who called you into the, the Ahab of Messiah to another message, right? So remember, how are you begotten? Through the message, right? Through any message by anyone? No, no, it's only one message, it's only one house, right? I will have no other work other than the one that I prophesied of in advance by my servants, the prophets. It's only one message, okay? So if you think you're smarter than Yahweh's house and you're bringing forth a different message, you're actually bringing testimony against Yahweh. Did you know that? You're not in unity with the message. So he says, I'm astonished at this. Verse 7, now that, not that there is any other glad tidings, just that there are some who trouble you and are trying to prevent the message or pervert the message of the Messiah. But even if we or a Malik from heaven should preach a message other than what we have preached to you, he shall be accursed. Okay, you know what that means, accursed? It means destroyed, set aside for destruction. This is what he's saying here. So if you preach something different than what we're preaching, you're going to be destroyed. All right, these are the scriptures. Verse 9, as we have already... As we have already said, so I now say again, if any man preaches any message to you contrary or different from what you have received from us, he shall be accursed or he shall be destroyed. OK, he, he shall die. So now, who am I trying to please, man or Yahweh? Do I seek to be a man pleaser? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of the Messiah. OK, scripture. And like the deacon said yesterday, fact. <laughs> these are facts, right? Okay, these are the facts. Remember what Yeshua said, search the scriptures, right? Search the scriptures. For in them you think you have salvation, but these are they which testify of me, right? These are the things that testify of me. These words right here. You cannot preach any other message other than the one that you've heard here. Okay, whether you understand it or not, pray for understanding, but don't teach against it. Don't teach something different than what's being taught here. Continuing on. It says here, this is at the bottom here, bold face. 
Do you have an arm like Yahweh? Can you thunder with a voice like his? <laughs> Can you set majesty and excellence upon your head like the keeper? Can you wrap yourself with glory and beauty like the talit? I like this part, man. He's asking, can you bring yourself to perfection or could you have brought yourself to perfection without the house of Yahweh? This is what he's asking you here. So let's read that again here. Do you have an arm like Yahweh? Can you thunder with a voice like his? Can you set majesty and excellence upon your head like the keeper? Can you wrap yourself with the glory, with glory and beauty like the talit? Okay, without understanding, we're just going to read right over that, right? But here's why we need a teacher. This is, listen to what he says here. He's asking you, can you bring yourself to perfection or could you have brought yourself to perfection without the house of Yahweh? Who read that and got that out of this? Okay. We need a teacher, man. And it makes perfect sense when we look at that. It makes perfect sense when we look at it now, right? Because pastor showed it to us. It's like, oh, yeah. The holy garments, and I understand what the keeper represents, you know, and this and that. Man, that, that makes sense, man. Pastor has a great understanding, right? But then we want to rebel against the teachings because we think we know something or, you know, he, he didn't say something that we thought he should have said, like, Pastor, not bringing out all the information. Really? You know, the more you know, the more you're responsible for. Do we know that? You know, maybe, he's, not maybe, he's holding, uh, he's preparing us to receive more information, Okay. He's preparing us to receive more information. He can't just give us everything. He has to slowly build us up to receive these things. But again, this pride, this self-pride makes us think that we're smarter than we really are to the point where we judge the way that pastor teach at times. Really? Ridiculous, man. So could you bring yourself to perfection on your own without the house of Yahweh? It says, could you have done this? Unleash your judgment. Look upon anyone who is proud and bring him low. Can you do that, EO? <laughs> Hell no, you can't. Okay? This is what he says here. Hell no, you can't. Okay, you absolutely cannot bring yourself to perfection without the house of Yahweh. Okay? If we don't understand that, man, we're going to burn in hell. If you think that Yahweh is just going to somehow lift you above his priesthood, because you don't agree with the priest and that Yahweh's just waiting on the end so that you can be exalted? You're already sunk. You're already sunk. If that's the attitude, if those are the thoughts. You know, Yahweh has a perfect plan. Okay, so even when things go wrong, there's a lesson. And not that Yahweh is making things go wrong, but if things don't go the way that we plan and things go wrong is what I'm saying, there's a lesson in that. So why wasn't I successful in that, Yahweh? I didn't get counseling. OK, or, you know what? I still see the pride in me. I still see this. If we don't examine ourselves, we're not going to grow. All right. But we can't lift ourselves up above Yahweh's establishment. OK, can't do it, man. We're supposed to be in unity, ushering in the kingdom, working together. He's calling us to be a priestly family. OK, everyone here is training to be a member of the priestly family. OK, we have to stand in our place. Continuing on. I want to read that again. <laughs> Hell no, you can't. OK, no, you cannot bring yourself to perfection without the house. Nobody here can. OK, see, we understand this, right? The priests, we understand this also. We know we didn't bring ourselves to perfection. We didn't make ourselves priests. Right. We didn't we didn't establish ourselves as teachers. OK, this is Yahweh's doing. OK, and it's an honorable position to help someone make choices in their lives that's going to save their lives. And so that they can help someone else save, their, save lives. It's an honorable thing, man, that's not taken lightly. Okay? It's not taken lightly. It's a very serious thing. It says Satan herself, let me see here, it says nobody can. It has, it has to be done by them. Okay? Meaning you have to choose yourself, you know, to listen, to submit to the teachings. But it says that Satan herself has spent years practicing to get this pride into people where they will not humble themselves and do what the priest tells them to do. That is what makes this so dangerous because they're cutting, them, uh, cutting their throats to spite their bellies. They're cutting themselves off from eternal life because they hate the priest or think they're too high and mighty to bend themselves down to give a listening ear 
to one of Yah- to the one Yahweh sends to bring this perfect plan of Yahweh. Okay, we have to listen to the priests, right? And if we can't do it now, remember, matter of fact, um, in the book of Galatians, um, the apostle Shaul says that he corrected Kepha to his face. Y'all remember that? Do you remember why he corrected Kepha? He called Kepha a hypocrite. Exactly. He was a respect. He was being a respecter of persons. He said, Kepha, you know, you can't act this way with the Gentiles, you know, when there's no one else around. But then when the Yadain come around, treat them like trash. Y'all was not a respecter of persons. You're, you're, you're wrong in this. You know, the message is being preached to them as well as to, to the um, to the um, to the Yadain. It's like, so you can't treat them one way and then expect them to follow your example. You're not setting a righteous example, Kepha. Get it together, son. Right? Get it together. Continuing on here. It says, and highlight this, man. It says, they themselves would cut it off right now, thinking they are too smart or thinking they are so smart in themselves that they could solve these problems by themselves. Has, has that been in your mind? Sure it has. You're lying if you say it hasn't, you proud witch, you proud bastard. That's all you are. When you set your mind like this, you're nothing more than manure and highlight. You see how pastor's trying to show us how serious of an offense this is? To think that we can solve these problems on our own, to think that we can pick up the book of Yahweh and actually, you know, bring people to salvation without the house of Yahweh, without the guidance of the priest in the house of Yahweh. You see how seriously he said, you're nothing but manure. Okay. How can we think that we can go outside of Yahweh's house and bring salvation, bring people to perfection? Okay. We know that's not true. We know we cannot do it. Right. We have 6,000 years of history to show that you cannot bring salvation to anyone outside of Yahweh's house without being in unity with Yahweh's house. How many religions are there out in the world saying that they can do this very thing here? 4,199 religions, right? Billions of people on the face of the earth thinking that they can bring forth salvation outside of being in unity with Yahweh's house. If that was the case, then why why are the prisons filled? Why are the graves filled? Why are the hospitals filled? Right? They can't do it. We can't do it without Yahweh's house. None of us. That's the way you are going to wind up. He's talking about like manure. And Yahweh will not correct it either. It says here, look upon anyone who is proud and bring him down. Okay, look upon anyone who is proud and bring him down. Okay, so... Here, back up here, again, we're talking about this self-pride, how we think we're so smart, like we, are, we're, we can solve everything on our own. You know, when we're being counseled by the priest, right, when we're, when we're getting counseled by the priest, sometimes we don't like what we hear, right? We act like, oh, con, you don't understand, you know, this is what I'm going through. It's like, okay, um, in fact, as of right now, I've only been a priest for 10 years, okay? I've only been a priest for 10 years. And I'm like the, I was ordained with another man, but we're the, we were the last, well, it was two ordained after us, but there, anyway. 10 years, right? Men have been priests longer than that. 20, 30, 30 plus years of dealing with people over and over again, decades of, of giving decisions Yahweh's way. Decades of rendering decisions, but yet, and this is why I was thinking about this scripture, because we still had an attitude like, like the priest can't guide us. Like I said, I only have 10 years, okay? So I'm pretty much like the, the youngest of all of the priests, right? But 20, 30, almost 40 years of, of being a priest, and, and we act like this. Behold, this is our first key for 412. Behold, do not be amazed concerning the fiery trials which you must undergo in order to be tested as though some alien thing were befalling you. But rejoice in the fact that you are partakers of the Messiah's sufferings, 
that when, he, when his glory is revealed, you, you might also be glad with exceeding joy. Okay, so why did I think of that scripture? Because we act like what we're going through is exclusive to us. Like no one else has ever gone through what we're going through to the point where we're not going to accept the guidance of the priests who've been doing this for decades. No, Khan, you don't know. Really? Oh, yeah, because this is the first time that I heard that before. Yeah, no one else has ever gone through that. So that scripture that says there's nothing new under the sun, oh, scratch that out of your book of Yahweh. Because what you just went through is completely new. I've never heard. Hey, get past on the phone because I've never heard of that. It's ridiculous. There's another scripture just, it's just like it in uh, 1 Corinthians. Ten thirteen. So on page eight ninety three it says, "There is no temptation taking hold of you except what is common to man, and Yahweh is faithful." Did you hear that? Yahweh is faithful it means you can trust Yahweh. Okay, you can trust Him. He will not let you be te tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also make a way of escape that you might be able to bear it. So what's one of the ways of escape that he provides for us? Yeah. Counseling. In the multitude of many counselors, there's failure, men. Never forget that. There's what? Success, safety. What did I say? I said failure. I apologize, man. All right. In the multitude of counselors, many counselors, there's success, man. Right? So why do we have a problem trusting in the decision of the priest? Okay? There's at least two priests counseling you. Right? And if they're in agreement, why do we have a problem? Why do we have a problem? Huh? Stop trying to save my life. Okay? I want to die. Just leave me alone. That's pretty much what we're saying. That's pretty much what we're saying. When we argue, when we fight, when we resist the instruction, the, the guidance, the correction from the priest. And sometimes the correction is not going to be pleasant to you. Okay? Sometimes it's not going to be pleasant. Sometimes you really need a... Sometimes I feel like I need to get a running start, jump up with both feet, and then <laughs> kick you in the rear. But I expect the same to me if I mess up, right? Sometimes we all need to be kicked in the rear. I'm not literally talking about kicking you in the rear. But we all need to kick in the rear. Pastor's kicking us in the rear right here. Do we understand this? He's kicking us in the rear right now, okay? And if, we're, if, we, if we, like, kind of move out, oh, you missed, Pastor. You, you better take that kicking. You better get kicked and get it right. I'm telling you, I love when pastor kicked me. It just means, oh, he's straightening me out. He's saving my life. All right. Now, that's probably a bad example of, uh, of kicking because that's physical. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying here. All right. Be thankful for, for this correction, man. Okay. Be thankful for the correction. It's all to save our lives. And this is what Eob is going through. He's going through this correction. You shouldn't have married that woman, Eob. Shouldn't have married that woman. Okay. This is going to mess up my plan for salvation, Eob. OK, and now that you're going through these tests, you're going to act like you're so righteous that, you know, just relax. You know, this this is still part of my plan here. And you will rejoice in the end of this. You will rejoice in the end of this. So here it says. Look upon anyone who is proud and bring him down. Can you do this? Yo, can any of you do it? No, you can't. You can't change their minds. You can't even read their minds at this time. You will be able you will be able to later read their minds and hearts. OK, so again, we can't even we we can't change anyone's mind. We can only present the information. So think about what's going on in Yahweh's house right now. OK, think about this. The commission of the priests, we're teaching. OK, we're teaching. And it's up to all of us to choose, choose to accept the teaching. OK, do you think that the full authority of the priests are being used at this time? If you think so, then you lack understanding, okay? The scripture shows that the priest set up and removed kings, okay? The priesthood is a government, but right now we're teaching, okay? We're not condemning or, 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 or doing these other things, right? We're trying to teach, and it's going to be up to each individual to either accept it or reject it, but we're going to be judged based on what we do. We're going to be judged based on whether or not we believed in Yahweh by believing and trusting in his administration, the teachings that came forth from his house, that's coming forth from his house, or whether we think we can do it on our own. Well, that's not enough information, Kahan. What Yahweh showed me last night was this. Like, oh, really? Okay. 
You know, someone else is going to be standing in your camp or at feast. <laughs> You've seen it time and time again. Do you know how many people left because they thought they were smarter than a priest? I remember as a deacon, you know, hearing other deacons, you know, rattle things off. And I'm like, oh, that sounds great on paper, but it's not what the house is teaching. Okay, you know, you want to know why there's so many people still in the house of Yahweh for all of these years? It's because they didn't leave um, the teachings that pastor brought forth, and they teach the same thing that he teaches. The people that's teaching different things eventually leave. Eventually leave because they feel that what they have to offer is more than what the house has to offer. 4,199 religions. What, you want to be, you know, 4,200? You want to go out and start your own church religion or whatever? You're a free agent to make your own choice. And like Pastor said, you're like manure, and he's not going to clean it up. He's not cleaning up your mess. Continuing on. No, you can't do it, Eob. And Eob was a smart and wise man, well-trained in the laws of Yahweh. I think he, at that time, had forgotten about a plan. If he ever knew about it, he had forgotten about it at that time. Crush the wicked where they stand. This word crush, okay, man, this is one of your vocabulary words. Crush means to correct, turn around, or convert, okay? Crush means to correct, turn around, or convert. So you can see how, with these words, if you don't know Yahweh, Okay, if you don't if you don't allow the laws of Yahweh to change your character, how you could think that Yahweh said to to crush the enemy. Yeah, that's not what Yahweh means. (laughs) You don't know Yahweh. Yahweh will not tell you to go out and just start hacking people to pieces. Well, he told Samuel that. Yeah. Well, you don't understand what that means either. Right. Samuel didn't go hacking people to pieces. (laughs) But we're not going to get into that tonight. But here it says that is what the plan is. Turn this world and the universe around and stop the evil stupidity that is going on in the universe among the sons of Yahweh, okay? To turn the world around, to turn the universe around, to stop people from doing the things that they're doing. But here's the thing that we were talking about, okay? This this self-pride, you know? So this is how they treated Yahshua. Uh, Yachanan 5, well, actually... I quoted this scripture earlier, so let's read this one first. This is Yachanan 539 on page 820. It says, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. But you will not come to me that you might be saved. Okay, so again, like we were saying earlier, it's not just Yahshua, because some people are, well, I believe in Yahshua. I just don't trust the priest. Well, if you don't receive the priest, then you're not receiving Yahshua. Okay, you're not receiving pastor, you're not receiving Yahweh. You have to receive whom is sent. Right again, the priest didn't send themselves. We didn't send ourselves. Okay, so what? When you become priest, it's automatically different for you. Well, Yahweh chose me, but He didn't choose the rest of the priests. <laughs> you see the foolishness in that mindset. Okay, either we believe or we don't. We believe in the whole plan, the whole process, or we don't. Right? We have to start changing the way that we think. Or okay, or we're ceasing Yahweh's judgment. We're causing Yahweh's judgment to cease, or we're trying to cause Yahweh's judgment to cease. So, and this is what I'm talking about here. Look down to verse 45. It says, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one who will accuse you, Moshe, in whom you trust. For had you believed Moshe, you would have believed me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, okay, and that's a key right there, the writings, Okay, the writings. Have you not read, search the scriptures, read the book of Yahweh, right? Search out the book of Yahweh and read. If you have, but if you do not believe his writings, how would you believe my words? So why would he say that? Because his words are the teachings that come from the scriptures. His words are the very words that Moshe wrote. This is what he's trying to tell these men here. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? How will you believe the law and the prophets? Right. What has pastor ever said that was not according to the scriptures? OK, what has he ever said? What has a priest ever said up here that's not according to the scriptures? According to what pastor has taught us. But like he says, if you don't believe what's written, then how are you going to believe the teachings? When you hear the priest talk, you should be able to say, oh, damn, kind of right. That's 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 scripture. Right. Because we're not giving you our opinion. 
Okay, we're giving you the laws of Yahweh. We're giving you the judgment of Yahweh. And if we can't accept that, then we're not accepting the judgment of Yahweh because this is the plan of Yahweh to turn things around, to turn around the earth, the entire universe. Okay, but it has to start here at his house. Judgment begins where? At the house of Yahweh. It begins here, men, right? Judgment begins here. We have to accept these things, train, and then go out and teach what we've learned. I mean, come on, that sign hasn't been moved in years. But can we quote it? Okay, have we made that a part of our memory? Or is it just, you know, background stuff? Now, all of these things are up here to remind us, to remind us of these things on a regular basis, right? Just like Yahweh does, the lampstand, the Ark of the Covenant, you know, the Talib with the Zizis, our keepers, all of these things are to remind us of the plan of Yahweh so that we can trust in him. And if we don't accept these things, like it says, we simply will not be there. Okay, we won't be there. We won't be teachers, man. Continuing on here. This word crush means to turn around, and that's the whole plan of Yahweh. It says, bury them in the dust together and shut them up in the grave. Then if you are able to do this, I myself will acknowledge to you that your own right hand can save you. It means you can save your own life. <laughs> Yahweh knows you can't do it. We can't do it. Eob got to thinking then. He decided that he wasn't so smart after all. And you can tell from the rest of this that he began to see what Yahweh was saying. He was fully re repentant of it and that he uh, of it and that he was more than glad. So he rejoiced that he realized that, oh, my thinking was wrong concerning this. Thank you for pointing that out to me, Yahweh. Thank you for pointing out that I was a proud bastard and you're trying to save my life, Yahweh. I was too stupid to realize that I was resisting you when I was arguing with my counselors, Yahweh. If you remember Eob's wife, the last person who he never should have married in the first place was also taken. His sons and daughters were all wiped out, so he could not be a part of it. He still had time to, to breed others from a righteous, holy woman who would be part of Yeshua's bloodline. Verse 15, behold now, behemoth, the hippopotamus, which I made as well as you. He feeds on grass like an ox. See the strength in his, in his loins and the power in his massive belly. He moves his tail like a cedar tree. So think about that. So he's being very, it's like an act color speech. He's being very descriptive here. He was like, here's an animal. When it moves its tail, it's like, it's like a cedar tree just whoosh, right? So when we're reading, we should be picturing these things or trying to get a, you know, trying to relate or try to understand the point that he's trying to get across here. So this is this massive animal. Okay, this massive animal, this strong animal. It says here, the tendons of his thighs are tightly knit. His bones are like the beams of are like beams of bronze and his ribs are like bars of iron. He ranks him on the first of the works of Yahweh, yet his maker can approach him with his sword. Surely the mountains yield food for him. He couldn't make it without Yahweh. What he's trying to get over to Eob at this time is this strong beast, as strong as he is, uh, which is much stronger than you and me. He couldn't make it if Yahweh didn't give him the things to provide for his livelihood. Okay, do we get that? There's nothing we can do without Yahweh, men. Okay, Yahweh provides for us. And on the Day of Atonement, these are some of the things that we should be thinking about. Man, this is what it would be like until we die if Yahweh didn't provide for us our food and clothing, our air, these different things, right? Providing for us the things that we need. But then we take you know, the, the guidance of Yahweh, and I'm talking about like the mankind, you know, we take, the, we take the house of Yahweh for granted, we leave Yahweh's house, and then we defile the earth with blood. You know, we breed STDs in our bodies because we don't want to follow the, the, the laws concerning our, our relationships and things like that. And now, you know, just like the scripture says, the earth will no longer yield its strength. So now, food, garbage, you know, plus filled with preservatives. <laughs> We're killing ourselves, man. You know, we're destroying the planet, right? We're destroying the planet. We're destroying all life because we're rejecting this great wisdom from Yahweh. We're rejecting the great wisdom of Yahweh. 
Okay, and remember what Yahshua said in Revelations, right? Who did he give this great? Who is he inspiring in these last days? His Malik, right? Who is his Malik? Pastor, right? He gave this great, he, he inspired pastor. He's given this great information to pastor, these revelations, these, these teachings, right? And then pastor ordains the priest to bring this information to us, right? To expound on these things, okay? This is what these classes are for, so that the priest can expound and go deeper into what he's saying because he doesn't have time to go deep into these things. Look at how much information. And look, even in the month that we use to cover this sermon, you think we're covering everything that pastor said in here? Do you know how much we have to cut out <laughs> as far as like where the studies can take you? Do you know how long you can study a sermon in the book of Israel? You could probably get at least 50 other sermons out of it. And that's off the first page, if you're diligent with, with your presentation. It's endless. It's the source of all knowledge, the source of all information, man. All right, let's see here. Let me move on here. It says here, surely this is a uh, right-hand column, second paragraph. Surely the mountains yield food for him. That is why I designed, that is what, this is the way I designed him to do. Yahweh says, and all the animals of the field play nearby. He lies under the, the lotus trees in a hiding place of reeds in the marsh. The lotus trees cover him with their shade. Verse 24, can any capture him when he is on guard or trap him and pierce his nose? He says only a farmer or a rancher would know what this is talking about here. We used to take the meanest bulls so mean that they would plow your horse under. When I was a child, there was a neighbor next door who was kind of a tough guy. He roped this bull because the bull was doing some crazy things and tearing up his fences. He wanted to get him to the market. He roped this bull. Once he got the rope on his horns, the bull turned around and looked at him and that horse. So imagine this bull just turned around. He's like, all right, so this bull means business, right? <laughs> he must have picked that horse up four feet off the ground and threw him and the man too. They finally shot the bull. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm not laughing at this shot the bull, but there's a reason why pastor's sharing this story with us, right? This bull was being rebellious. He was doing things to cause this man problems, tearing up his fences and things like that. And when the man tries to use, try to use a rope to, to control his behavior, the boy said, you can't control me, right? You can't control me. That attitude cost the boy its life. They had to shoot the boy. They put the boy down. So what do you think is going to come to, uh, come to pass with us if we have this kind of an attitude? Okay? When we die, we're going to cease to exist. That's it. We can't be like this boy. Okay? Everything that pastor says is for a reason. He told us, pay attention to what? Every other word that comes out of his mouth? Every single word. There's a lesson in these things, man. I remember that we could take the meanest bulls there, there were, and we could pierce their nose and put rings in them. Some bulls were so, bru so brutal and crazy that they would even tear that loose and tear their nose all up, causing themselves harm. They would finally have to be killed sometimes. They would probably have to be killed. Sometimes they go crazy. So can you pierce his nose? And they do that to control them with a ring in the nose. And you have to understand that. That's why they put the, 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 put the ring in there, to try to control this animal, okay? To try to control this animal. Highlight this part, man. He is showing Eob with what little strength you have or what little knowledge you have, you cannot control any of these animals right now, okay? We don't have that authority right now, okay? Okay? We've sinned. We've cut ourselves off from having that authority. Okay, but Yahweh wants to give us that authority, and we see examples of this authority. You will be able to, you will be able to one day, because that is part of the power you will have to control them. You can lead them all in the ark, in an ark, and make them live at peace for so many days and nights. Yahweh did. He gave that power to Noah, and he did. Can you pull out Babylon with the fish hook? Another word was used in the King James Version. Brown, driver, Brown and Driver and all the authority, authority books say, this is Babylon that he is speaking of here. 
Okay, and so Babylon is one of your vocabulary words, man. Okay, Babylon. And he says here, now if it is Babylon, then, and highlight this part, this is the definition. It is speaking of the whole confused world at this time. Okay, Babylon. It is speaking of this, it is speaking of the whole confused world at this time. And this is the plan of Yahweh over the whole confused world. It is speaking of Babylon. All the authoritative books say it is. Can you pull out Babylon with a fish hook? Can you press down his tongue? Can you stop the deception that is going forth from this world right now? Can you? Can you stop the deception that's going forth from this world right now? Okay. And this is what Yahweh is trying to say. This is my plan, Eob, and you want to proclaim your righteousness? Okay, we want to proclaim our righteousness, how smart we are, how we can bring ourselves to perfection without the house of Yahweh. What can we do without Yahweh's house? Okay, nothing. Okay, the people that have left thinking that they were better off with Yahweh's house. What work are they doing to bring forth salvation? Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing, men. Nothing pertaining to the kingdom of Yahweh, whether they think so or not. Okay. They might think that they're doing this great work of Yahweh. No, I'm, I'm teaching people the name of Yahweh and, you know, they keep the Sabbath. No, they're not. Okay. No, they're not. Are they doing it correctly? Can't. Okay. Are they keeping the feast? No, you can't keep the feast wherever you're at. Okay. You can't do that. Yeshua didn't do it. Okay. When this was taking place, history says that the land of Israel was dotted with every stupid religion as it is today. All of them were preaching salvation and they were all and they were all the farthest thing from salvation. And again, remember what Yeshua said. He says, search the scriptures, search the scriptures for you think you have salvation. But yet you don't believe me. You don't believe me. What? I got a demon. What? Wow. Right. Remember, they accused Yeshua of having a demon. Right? They accuse Yeshua of having a demon. It's, it's foolishness. He is saying here, you can take your fish hooks. Can you take your fish hooks and control with your puny little means that you have available at this time? Can you actually control Babylon and turn it around? And remember, it means confusion. Can you control the tongues of the deceivers? Can you control anything in this world? The only thing you can do right now is prepare yourself for the kingdom of Yahweh, man. That's all you can do. And it's pride to make you think that you can go around and tell your brother something that hasn't been taught here, like you're going to benefit your brother. The only thing you should be saying to your brother is like, hey, did you hear what pastor said? Did you hear the sermon today? Did you hear what the Kahan said in class? Those are the things we should be talking about, not, well, look, here, this is what Yahweh showed me. That's pride and you will burn in hell for it. Okay. Time is short. Okay, time is short. Can't sugarcoat this stuff anymore. Now, if I'm wrong, then pastor's going to get a running start. Kick me in my rear. All right. And well, if not him, his disciples. So you know who <laughs> you know who's coming. Right. And I'll, I'll be glad to take that kicking. Like, all right, I'll, I'll back off. You know, but men, our lives are on the line here. Okay, our lives are on the line. We have to be a part of this administration. We have to be in unity or we won't even save ourselves. And right now, that's what's been given to you, okay? Not saving yourself by your own hands, but save yourself by being obedient to what you're being taught. What time is it? Man, I'm going to have to close here. This clock is, like, way off. I thought I had 20 more minutes. <laughs> Two minutes? 15 seconds? All right, let me see. I don't know why I keep looking at that clock and it's wrong. All right, so uh, I, better, I better just stop here at verse 74. Okay, so we'll, we'll pick up here next week uh, where it says Isaiah 41, verse 1. Okay, can you put a cord through their nose or pierce their jaw with a hook? So, man, throughout this week, and this is on page 95, so throughout this week, remember everything that we're covering. Again, the main point is getting rid of the self-pride, remembering the plan of Yahweh, okay, being in unity with what's being taught so that you can have a part in it, so that we all can have a part in it. None of us are exempt. Okay, we all have to choose to submit to what's being taught at Yahweh's house. 
All right? We have to get these things in our mind or we're not going to make it. We might qualify for life. But remember, Pastor, who remembers where Pastor said life was at, eternal life was at? Bottom of the totem pole. He said eternal life is the bottom of the totem pole. But in the religions, it's like, man, eternal life. Way at the top. And Pastor's like, what? You don't know the plan of Yahweh. You don't know the kingdom of Yahweh. That's, that's at the very bottom. That's, you got to at least have life to get everything else that Yahweh offers. You have to at least have life to get what Yahweh has to offer. Bottom of the totem pole. But without it, we have nothing else. We can't get life unless, unless we're obedient. Men, we, <laughs> I can't overemphasize it. Cannot overemphasize it. Okay, so I'm going to say it one more time. Believe into the one sent. Okay, believe into your priest, man. Believe the counselors when they come to you to help save your life. Okay, I'm not trying to govern over you, rule you. The priests aren't trying to rule you. We're trying to help build the family of Yahweh, okay? Build the family of Yahweh. Man, Yahweh, bless your understanding. If you all please stand, we'll close in prayer. Great Father in heaven, whose name alone is Yahweh. This is your servant, Kohan Kohila Falcons, coming to you in unity with your men here, Father Yahweh, and all of those who are watching. Being in unity with your holy body of priests, whom you have established in these last days to, 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 to enlighten us, Father Yahweh, with the teachings of, of our great pastor and overseer. Your last days and on a witness who, whom you've inspired and, and raised from a child, Father Yahweh, to be a light to all of the Gentile nations, Father Yahweh, to, to call us here to your great house, to be under the headship and the authority of our righteous high priest, Yahshua, our Messiah, who, who's honorable, Father Yahweh, beyond all belief, and who's given his life, Father Yahweh, which was a, an awesome and, and a brave sacrifice so that we can be here, Father Yahweh, and we know that he's the only one, Father Yahweh, that was, was, was bred and, and had the strength to, to go through what he went through, Father Yahweh, to be your lamb, Father Yahweh, to be our atonement offering. We thank you, Father Yahweh, for allowing us to, to have this understanding. We pray, Father, that we will not fall short of this calling, Father Yahweh, and dishonor you or Yahshua, our pastor, by having this pride in us, Father Yahweh. So we pray that you will continue, Father Yahweh, to break these things in us, Father Yahweh, and and, and continue to fashion and form us, Father Yahweh, fit for your every use. We do love you, ahab you, we do bless you, we do thank you. Pray and ask for your guidance, your protection, and your daily inspiration, both now and forever. And it is in Yeshua Messiah's name we do pray and ask all of these things. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Yahweh bless you, men.